Hey guys, uh, this is Mr. Welch again. We're going to be working here today on 2.2. This is um, just some homework help that's going to help us uh, um, understand a little bit more what each type of problem is asking us for. So I'll just kind of walk you through an example of each of these and, and we'll kind of go from there. So I'm going to just jump in and take care of question number eight. Okay. Uh, first thing we want to do is find the slope. Now I want to make something clear. We are going to want to tell us whether it's rising, falling, horizontal or vertical. Now keep in mind positive means rise, negative means fall. Okay, that means it's falling as it goes to the right. Zero is horizontal and if it's undefined it's vertical. Okay, so those are kind of our classifications. We're going to take question number eight. We'll call this x1, y1, and x2 y2. Well the formula for slope says m equals y2 which would be negative 5 minus y1 which is a regular 5 divided by x2 which is negative 6 minus x1 which is also a negative 6. This is really important that we indicate that we have a double negative here. I actually like to put some parentheses in like that. Now I know from my years of experience what's about to happen, but if you're not sure, just take it a step at a time. In the calculator, negative 5 minus 5 should come out as negative 10. In the calculator, negative 6 minus a negative 6, that's a double negative there, should come out as 0. Now normally we would divide that or simplify it and decide do we get a positive number, a negative number, 0, or any time 0 shows up in the denominator, we say that this is undefined. So the slope is undefined, making it vertical. So both, what is the slope and is it rising, falling, horizontal, vertical, are all part of your problem. Okay. So that's how we're going to do that first set. We're going to find the slope and defy, decide whether it's rising, falling, horizontal, vertical. <clears throat> the next type of question we're looking at is 18 through 23 where we're talking about figuring out whether two lines are parallel or perpendicular or possibly neither. You know, Perpendicular is a perfect 90 degree intersection. So what we have to do, and we're going to do question number 21 here, we have to find slope 1 and slope 2. So I'm going to do slope 1. Okay, my y2 is 2 minus my y1 is 8. So we'll go 2 minus 8 over. And then my x2 was 7 minus my x1 was 5. So hopefully you're seeing where those numbers are coming from as we build this. 2 minus 8 is negative 6, and 7 minus 5 is 2. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So that's the slope of the first uh, line. Now m2 would be the slope of our second line. Here I've got my y2 will be negative 1 minus my y1 which is negative 2. So I've got a double negative here that's going to matter over and then I have my x2 which is negative 4 minus my y2 which is negative 7. Again that double negative really important. When we evaluate negative 1 minus a negative 2, we should get a positive 1. And when we evaluate negative 4 minus a negative 7, we should get a positive 3. They are not the same, so I know it's not parallel. They'd both be negative 3 or both be 1 third, I could say parallel. Because they are different, parallel is out. For them to be perpendicular, they have to be opposite sign and they have to be reciprocated or flipped versions of each other. So just real quick, if we think of this negative 3 as being negative 3 over 1, we can see that these are upside down versions of each other. That means that this set of lines is perpendicular. The last thing that we're going to do is calculate the slopes with a rate of change. Okay, And so this is not a big deal, the slope process is the same. But what we want to do, we'll take 24, we take our slope will be the y2, 
30 minus y1, 12, over x2, 5, minus x1, 2. But I'm going to associate with each of these subtraction problems a unit. Since the x is measured in hours, I'm going to put hours on top. And on bottom, because the y is measured in dollars, okay, I'm going to put a dollar sign down here. I always put my, sorry, oh, I've got that backwards. Jeez, Mr. Welch, even I make mistakes sometimes. My y values are on top, so I want my y value unit to be on top, which would be dollars for the y's, and for my x's, it's in hours. Okay, that tells me my unit is going to be dollars per hour. So when I go 30 minus 12, that comes out to 18 over 5 minus 2 is 3. That should come out to be six dollars per hour. Now whether that's what you get paid or what you have to pay someone to use something, that's how we come out with a unit rate. It's, hey, here's your, uh, here's your um, number in terms of the slope, and then the rate is something that we want to have so we can understand what that number really means. It's not just a random six. It is six dollars for every hour that we change. All right, hopefully that's enough to get you through your homework and, and answer some questions. We'll see you in class.